Hi right, guys, thank you for joining as always, and as you guys can see on the screen right now, here are when first we're open the changes, team planner, and then when the battle starts. So feel free to join whichever interests you, or you know, follow me throughout this road of uh, changes that I did as uh, I dropped a few Pokemons actually going into this week. The reason was I wanted to get Rhyperior in properly, but still have a team that could support the other ones around it. And whether or not this change was better or worse, we really need to you know, figure that out as we go. But of course, when I did it, I didn't feel that it was the best change I could have done, as I decided to drop Cobalion for Virision. And yeah, Cobalion is a really good Pokemon, and I know dropping that is definitely hard. And I dropped Behem for Orbeetle, Sentiscorch for Galarian, Stunfisk, and Zarina for Rapier. So basically, my team is now with the fogging aspect only Rotom Fan and Hydreigon, which is obviously a thing that's not going to benefit me all that well. And Sentiscorch is my dedicated fire type. The reason I dropped Sentiscorch is because it's always been the reason not to have it in the game. So I decided to drop it because of the inconvenience. And Behem, I'll miss the buddy for <laughs> what his words. Um, and Cobalion is, like I said, really good. However, Version and Rhyperior are idle Pokemon. Orbeetle is a stick webber and could be very frustrating for some team matchup. And Galarian Sunfish is surprisingly bulky. Like, of course, a steel stab proper, I guess it was a metal claw, right? But besides that, it's quite right. It's bulkier than Steelix and uh, support with Stealth Rock. So I got a lot of good utilities, but at the same time, I lost a bit of an offensive presence. So. I'll just have that said, and uh, with that said, let's go into my team planner. And this week we're going up against the Toronto Road Runners, and you figure the guy I traded the Version with had, of course, be the guy that uh, I'm facing the week before, which I didn't necessarily think about. So, yeah, he got Cobalion, cool. Um, so, yeah, as you guys see on the screen, there's Covenite, Dominatan, Sylveon, Scrafty, Lantern, Mr. Mime, Galarian, Former Celia, Pillars Wine, Gudra, and Cobalion. And uh, there are a few key Pokemon here that keeps me at bay, so I really just want to try to define how I was thinking through this process. Because something I always do when I plan for a team is actually defining which Pokemon I don't expect to be there, and um, pinpointing key threats and Pokemon that I should potentially force to be dealing with. So with that said, Pokemon I don't expect to be there are Lantern, Mr. Mime and Pillow Swine, mainly because I do believe I deal with them somewhat well, and um, Virisian kind of helped me with that, but quite frankly, I just key. There are a few Pokemon here that are naturally hard to switch into, and um, the Pokemon I feel are key for it here is Covenite, Dominitan, and Cobalion. All of them really do like give me pressure. It's hard to switch into, and uh, for Cobalion, I really don't switch in that well at all. So if this is a Source Dance variant, it's gonna be rough on me. And um, yeah, like I said, no real switching. Uh, then we've got Sylveon, which is real annoying, and Scrafty with Intimidate that could actually keep me at bay. So that's something I'm not particularly fond of planning for. And then I believe it's a toss-up between Roselia and Gudra. Uh, reason I think Gudra could join is because it's very, very special defensively scary. But uh, Primarina, which is one of the Pokemon I do own, is something that I do believe keeps it away. But I think that's the only real one. Um, Mammoth Swine to an extent, I guess. And Roselia. Mainly due to hazards, you got Texas Spice and regular Spice, and somewhat specially defensively scary. So I think it's gonna be there. Um, I'm bel I like I feel it's gonna be there mainly because I also somewhat deal with the right period. Also, we can knock it out with uh, a Leaf Storm, so it's kind of scary. So leveling back and forth there, but these are the Pokemon I feel is gonna be there, and here are the Pokemon I'm going to bring. So, when I and Eric was planning for this team, Eric, of course, being one of my co-coaches and one of the most phenomenal Wi-Fi battles I know, is we were really just considering which Pokemon not to bring to this battle, because there are a lot of Pokemon that are... All, like, all of them are struggling in one way or another, because it's a team, good, very good team synergy. So, basically, we decided to not bring Rotom Fan and Orbeetle, and then it was started to become somewhat of a toss-up, to be honest. But Verisian barely made it, so we decided to cut him anyway. And Mamoswine, which was something that was on the team for the longest time, got cut for my stunt Fisk at the end. Uh, the main reason was because it didn't necessarily switch in that well with the Sylveon. Not that Galarian stunt Fisk do that anyway, but at least it has a few niches to kind of keep it at bay. So the team I'm bringing is um, 
Scarf of Dragon, able to outspeed uh, Scarf of Darmanitan, um, Jubilee's Dual Stab, and then Flash Cannon and U Turn. Um, then we have a Prima Arena, Scald, and Moonblast together with Rest Sleep Talk, as its bulk may be good for this battle. It can set up or it can survive Covenite, survive Gudra, survive Cobalion. Uh, to an extent, Rosalia and uh, Scrafty, and I do believe it loses to us, Call My Sylveon. Uh, Gengar, um, Colbert Berry this time for Scrafty alone, together with Nasty Plot and Dazzling Gleam and Dual Stab. And Regent, absolutely being brave here <laughs> and really, really, really slow to get a wet stockpile and uh, rest. And the attack moves here are Body Press and Jarball. Jarable actually do around 50% to that Sylveon, so you you figure that's my plan, right? It's it's not ideal, but the thing is here, Regent theoretically after two um, stockpiles are probably able to beat any team or any team member he has, and the main reason for that is because it's so goddamn bulky, and the rest really just kind of alleviates that and makes it even worse. The only thing that theoretically beats it would be a uh, a banded Darmanitan, but I hardly think that's going to be a case here. And uh, the Stunfisk is just a really niche set. It is Earthquake, Scald, Counter, and Stealth Rocks. Um, Scald is there for just getting resilient damage potentially. And uh, since we have Akaberry, we're supposed to survive either a Mystical Fire from Sylveon, but more so, I want Darmanitan to be able to go for that Flare Blitz and die to a counter. So that's the idea. If he goes on Earthquake, that's even better because I survive it a lot more easily than potentially that type of Flare Blitz. And now to the set I think is most niche and out there. And uh, kudos to Eric for actually suggesting this. It was, it made sense, but at the time that he told me about it, I didn't feel like it. It had to grow on me for like a week before he decided. All right, let's do this. Uh, Dual Dance, Soul Sense, Rock Polish variant of Rhyperiority with Stone Edge and Earthquake. A reason for this is there are plethora of Pokemons that can do super effective damage on towards Rhyperior, but necessarily not beat it. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, rock Polish, we, I mean the set here is quite speedy, which means we have a Rock Polish, we do outspeed uh, Cobalion. And theoretically, if we can, we go for another Rock Polish just to really ensure any type of scoff is not gonna beat us. Darmanitan's only attacks versus us are, what is that, do believe Super Power and Earthquake. Uh, None of them being necessarily that threatening, and um, Sword Stunts is there just for Covenant if that's somehow our last remaining Pokemon, and also the speed investment do allow us to outspeed a more defensive Sylveon naturally. But hopefully we don't come to that situation where I, I really want to set up both ways, or at least bait the, um, the Rock Polish to get into a situation where I get a plus two variant here. So ideally it's either against Covenant or um, or Darmanitan or even Scrafty to be able to um, set up, but um, Pokemon that beats this right here is actually Lantern, <laughs> and I really hope Lantern isn't there. And same thing with Muddy Water variant or Paroi variant of Gudra, who potentially could beat us. But overall, that's the team. Um, I really had no more plans besides that. I was kind of worried for this matchup, or I am worried about this matchup before going in. Because this team, no matter how I twist and turn things, I have niche ideas for individual matchups I hope I, I deal with. But basically, if the synergy is right, I lose by default. Because there are defensive utilities from my opponent's side that just really could keep me at an arm's length for quite some time. And I'm not planning to play for that long, as long as he can't potentially decide to bring it. So, with that said, let's go into the battle itself. Of course, the EVT week four versus Quinn, and this game is just as ever really tough. And this time, I actually included the team builder, so how about that? Um, let's see what we're going up against. Check my opponent, don't want to see Sylveon. There is Sylveon, cool. So, we see Rosalia. Okay, I, I kind of like this team, kind of what I was expecting, but still not. I kind of expect the Lantern to deal well with Marochon, which part I consider not to bring Rochon really. But it looks the part. Um, I'm just trying to. Uh, like. I think Rhyperia can sweep this team. Shouldn't be like. Yeah, I think it has opportunities. But we're gonna start off with 
Arcturage and uh, take it from there. Um, Desertroya this time is a weakness policy variant of uh, Rhyperior and uh, I am basing my whole strat around that. Uh, because this thing was pretty much impossible for me to prep for because, well, I never really um, knew how to take this team on. I clearly uh, given up Cobillion was a bit of a mistake versus this as I'm gonna fend off against it, but it was more than I actually don't have fire type since he actually is primarily weak to fire. But that's gonna work anyway, I think. Um, right, let's see, he leaves off with Hot Pocket. Uh, I have an ID here, and it's a bit on the risky side, but I'm gonna go directly since we're on Berry. I'm gonna go for a counter. Um, the idea here is even if he decides to switch out, I can at least capitalize on that. But I do want to bait <laughs> the Flare Blitz, <laughs> but I don't think we're going to see it. Um, if I were him, I'd just use right out. So, alright, I guess we can talk a little bit about that. Um, he actually, by mistake, only brought five Pokemons, and, uh, you know, we, we clearly aren't taking that victory. Uh, <laughs> even though it would have been funny, but yeah, of course not. Um, so, right, um, clearly the same team, of course. Um, let's see, Mr. Mime, I forgot to actually. Uh, I was just writing down a team, I just realized that I got all fives left besides Mr. Mime, so who knows? He might have forgotten just that, Mr. Mime. <laughs> so the thing is here, I have two options, but the way I see it, um, this mine. the way I see it, I hope he goes for Flare Blitz as he loses nothing by it, and if he goes for U-Turn, I do believe the Corviknight is a fair Pokemon to come in, and if it does, I can just go for Stealth Rocks anyway, and um, I guess that is as far as I go, I, like I have no real game plan. Besides changing the channel by mistake. Uh, <laughs> you guys did not see that. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Right channel, HGMI, give me love. Sorry, I'm still gonna go direct for a counter, but I have really no idea how to kind of wave around this. I, I assume him to be scarfed here anyway, so... Please go for Flare Blitz. You turn, you coward. And that shouldn't do anything to us. Actually, it did alright. And it's life form. Okay, so right here is faster. That is huge. So I do believe Corviknight comes in here naturally. Uh, Sentinel. Alright, there's Corviknight and it's shiny. It looks so great. And it's unnerved. I can't pop my berry. <laughs> here goes the counter. Actually... It did alright, didn't it? Did. I think it did alright. Um, but leftovers means, of course, that... Um, that he has, for sure... <laughs> um, what do you call it? Um, like, he has body press, U-turn, stuff like that, right? Um, I guess we bring a cell in Tria here. I mean, I forced him out, kind of. I expect him to be potentially bulk up, but more likely I would say U-turn defog um, um, potentially I guess body press you with Ray Bird or Iron Head. Um, but I think I force it out with Solentria Roost. That's fair. That's really fair. Um So I kinda should respect Rose Red come in, right? I don't believe he's gonna U-turn. As it could very well be faster, he's gonna lose a lot of that. Doing a bit of high risk here, but I just I don't wanna find that out. I don't believe that's anything for me anyway. It keeps roosting actually, okay. So possibly wanna gauge the damage. I'll use nasty plot here. If I were him, I get the fuck out of here. With Corbel Berries, we can take a power trip. 
Also realize one thing, um, he has Scrafty, and I really, really was expecting Scrafty for this matchup. <sighs> so I'll be honest, I'm, I'm kind of surprised about that. I'm more surprised actually he went for Sick of Roost. I don't believe Scald would have done that much damage, as I am decided after all to uh, deal with the Darmanitan to an extent, that is. He's really thinking here. He did not appreciate this series of plays. And I think he feels for Thunderbolt. Right, he did decide to stay in LE, so he's definitely mentioned to take a hit. We'll see. Braybird. Cool. Um, that did a good chunk, didn't it? Um, guess we do a stress test here, see how much we do. If this is not seen at least. Will I knock him out? Probably not. But we get him there. Keeps braver and cool. So that's Gengar out of the way, and I do believe that makes Sylvia a whole lot tougher. But Sentinel is within range of being killed. That's always pleasant. I'm not sending Desotroya, as I do believe. Uh, I do believe we can get a combination here that's kind of nice. Going for that rock polish. Because I think he's trying to roost here. Or go for an attack. If he goes for body press, it would be nice. That's right, we are faster anyway. So that's kind of scary. <laughs> Let's see, he roosts. Cool. Over soul stance here. The dual dance. Body presses. Oh, jeez. Yeah. 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 We can absolutely go for another rock polish. Um, just to kind of secure potentially any Scarfer in Kabelion that I do believe could be Shuka Perry anyway. So maybe I should have attacked. Right, polish one more time and. Uh, keeps body pressing. Cool. Maybe I am greedy. Maybe I'm greedy. A little bit. Right, Stone Edge, it should knock him out if I connect it. There we go. Yeah. 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 I know I should have possibly have gone for another another soul stance, but at least there is no scarfer here that will beat me. And I think the rest falls third quick, I think I'm fine. As long as Cobellion isn't Shukaberry. Or if this guy is scarfed, I mean, that would have been wonderful, right? Um, I'm not stressed. I am not stressed at all. I am not stressed at all. 
I swear, if I ever get this, then I don't know what to say. Besides the whole, like, like I talked with my friend here, Eric, or Ash Nakai, who kind of mentioned, like, if we get a rock polish and a weakness policy activated, we should be golden. And all I was thinking, like, it's a stupid idea, and I will absolutely try it. <laughs> So, I, I mean, what, what else can I say? This is a dumb idea that might actually work. And uh, that's all I have to say. Like, I, <laughs> I have nothing. Um, the way he sends in Pokemon, I do believe Cobalion is not of a Shukiberry variant. And, um... I think the second rock polish kind of seal it. I hope so. Uh, with that said, like, did I gain anything by doing what I did with Gengar? Possibly not, but I was absolutely not feeling that Kovanite was going to stay in versus Rhyperior or the range he was at. Or, you know, I was hoping, and then I figured he would switch out. And, and not seeing Darmanitan Scarfed kind of made this game with rock polish behind me easier, but it wouldn't necessarily mean anything unless we knew what Kobelian was all about. And I guess we get the chance now to find that out. First and foremost, if he is Sugarberry, can he survive this earthquake? He isn't. Oh jeez, I... I don't know what to say. <laughs> I'm not excited, I'm just like, I'm in shock. I didn't think this was gonna ever work. I thought it was a stupid idea. I insist that it still is a stupid idea, and uh, I guess we have Rhyperior now in the MVP spot as the absolute, the, the best trade I ever, never intended to do. Um, I mean, Jesus. We did not even need a timer. <laughs> Alright, um, to my opponent, I shouldn't say GG, this is... He could not have foreseen this. I mean, no matter how I twist and turn things from here, there is no way you could have predicted this. There is no way I could have predicted this was gonna work, and all I really gonna say to my opponent is that I really hope we face each other in a game soon that isn't like this. I'll take the win as I need it, but Jesus, I have no idea what to say. Um, I feel awful. I am. I never go for those early sweep unless I need to, and this time, like, I was just blindly hoping. There is no strat involved here, it, 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 this is just me hoping that would have worked. So, yeah. Well, we're gonna make one of those really cool thumbs with Rhyperus for sure. Um, if anything, make sure to check out my opponent's side as I do recognize that he wants to get his few fonts in, and Consider the games he's been playing, he's been doing really well and has a good theme idea and so this is definitely not representing his caliber and I feel really badly for that. Uh, but yeah, thank you everybody for watching, join us week 5 versus our next opponent, I have no idea who, who that is yet. Take care everyone, bye.